Have you ever heard that when you're cooking something with oil and the oil starts burning, what's the thing you should never do? Cook. <laughs> Hi guys, we're in beautiful Switzerland today and we found this really nice spot along a river to do a little experiment. I'm here with Andrew and Andrew, when we're cooking with oil and the oil catches fire, what's the one thing we should never do? I've always been told you should never throw water on it. Do you know why? I do not. And that is exactly why we're here to find out. Let's do a little experiment. Since we're dealing with fire today, the most important thing is safety. So we brought our safety equipment. Where are my goggles? Uh, you don't get me. Cool. We're safe. Right, so I brought a little cooker uh, to imitate our stove. I bought a super cheap pan. And we're not using oil, but we're using wax candles. The principle is the same, it's just a little easier uh, with them. So let's put some of them in there. Okay. This is more difficult than I assumed. Yeah. Yeah, apparently I'm not very good at this. The reason for using candle wax rather than vegetable oil is the lower ignition temperature of the wax. This seemed like a good idea since we weren't sure at all whether our little camping cooker would manage to get the whole pan hot enough. Wow, we're making a mess of these candles. <laughs> okay, uh, I think this is enough. Uh, we have a few candles now in there. And now our job is to try to melt them and get the wax boiling on this cooker. So let's see how this is going. Does it work? Okay, it's on. Oh yeah, it's burning. Having managed to ignite the cooker despite our greasy fingers, we now had some time to kill. The wax is still getting hot. Uh, we have a little bit of time, which means we can try to think of how can we deliver the water to the burning wax uh, from a safe distance. So we came up with an expert water delivery system. Then, after about a quarter of an hour That's of continuous steaming. heating, the wax quite suddenly caught fire. Oh, it's burning. We got it. Yeah. Okay, great. It's burning. That means we're almost there. What do you think? Shall we try it? I think we're good, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's getting any hotter. No. Let's go for it. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. Having managed to convince Andrew to lend me his safety goggles, I tried to remove the now burning pan from the cooker and especially from the almost full cartridge of butane gas on which it was now resting. Unfortunately, I was about to find out why the pan was so cheap. A part of its handle was made from a burnable material and on fire. Gotta go quick though. Way too hot. It's too hot? With the pan safely on the ground, we could now proceed to show what happens when we spray water on the grease fire. Alright, ready? Yeah. Wow, okay, that was uh, more nerve-wracking than I thought it would be. Did it at least look cool? Yeah, I thought it looked pretty cool. <sighs> I burned myself um, cloths for the next time. That would have been a, a good idea. All right, but why did it happen like this? Why did, why did the fire just explode when we put uh, water on there? The reaction happens in three steps. In step one, the water hits the burning wax. 
Because water molecules are polar molecules, which means they have a tiny positive charge on one end and an equally tiny negative charge on the other end, they like to stick together with other polar molecules because opposite charges attract. This is why water mixes so well with salt or other water-based solutions. Wax or oil, on the other hand, consists out of non-polar molecules. This means they are electrically neutral. Since the polar water molecules can't establish a bond with the non-polar molecules, the two liquids stay completely separate and don't mix at all. Because water has a larger density than wax or oil, step two sees the water sink to the bottom of the now extremely hot pan, where it eventually makes contact and, in step three, immediately evaporates. The now gaseous water vapor rises first to the surface of the burning wax, then into the air, taking tiny chunks of burning wax with it, causing the explosive flames that we observed. Even though only a few droplets of water hit the pan in our experiment, it is nevertheless clear why you should never pour water onto a crease fire. Instead, try to cover the pot or pan with a lid or throw some non-burnable material like sand or dirt on top of the fire. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a thumbs up and consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Always remember, stay curious and keep the good tides rolling. See you next time.